I te teach the way I paint and the way I was trained and and the influence is of course classical realism for this. Um, there's no right or wrongs with painting really, it's self-expression but this is a very controlled way of painting and it's, it's the way I was trained and, and the big influence is, is like Dutch still life um, where it's very uh, dark and then it, it, it's illuminated. Um, so I'll, I'll get underway. This is basically what I do with, with my class. Initially I want to figure out where I'm going with this and of course if you don't have the composition right uh, you're, you're really sunk. So um, I use a piece of paper like this that has roughly the same dimensions as my canvas uh, and use it as a viewfinder. So do I want to do it this, paint it vertically? Is it more interesting this way? Um, so uh, lots of decisions to make, but I have a border. I can see exactly where my painting is going and how I'm going to have this set up. And I think I'll do it horizontally. I think uh, vertically can look a little more exciting, but uh, I like I like the way this incorporates the colors in the little carpet, and uh, so I have some idea. Um, placements so important. Um, you don't want to have your bowl sitting on the bottom of your canvas. You don't want to have little tiny fruit in the middle. You, I'd rather see people work large and, and run off the canvas than, than have it kind of squeezed in the middle. So the way I start, use a black and a burnt umber. I like a real warm, warm dark tone. And that's very black. I'm just going to cover my whole canvas. And this canvas, I, I like a stretched canvas. I think uh, the quality tends to be better than canvas that's on board, but you can use that too. Um, some canvases vary a lot. In, in, uh, some are super absorbent, I find depending on where you buy them. And some are like sandpaper. You really want to sort of check. On this, in this case, I've actually sealed the canvas with an acrylic sealer because it, they, they're too absorbent and they just, you know, suck up all the paint and it's hard to get the results you want. I'm just going to put a little more a number in this. So I like a very warm background um, and the color, yeah, black and burnt umber are, are very inexpensive colors. The, they are easy to come by. You can make your black paint from your fireplace. Um, burnt umber is an earth color. So they're, as paints go, they're inexpensive and the earlier artists, this was readily available. You, uh, if you wanted reds and blues, they were very expensive pigment, pigments, so they were used sparingly in, in painting and towards the end. So this is kind of an, an economical way to paint. So that's the start. You know, people, when they, when they want to paint, they're thinking line and color. And that's often where things can go wrong. I'd like people to think of values, light and dark and form, rather than line and color. So I use a, a shop towel, lint-free shop towel. You can buy at the hardware store. Um, I can 
dampen it a little bit, I use odorless min mineral spirits as a thinner. And I don't need much of this, but I'm just going to dampen my towel. It, inexpensive, it's, uh, you don't get the fumes. So I've, I've dampened this, may, maybe too much, but um, I'm going to pick out some of my lightest areas in here. And I'll start with. So I'll, I'm I'm dealing with just light and dark right now. And I also have. I like to have my canvas at the same level as this still life. They call it sight size. So I'll be painting approximately that size and, and on the same level. So I'm just going to, this is almost like finger painting here. Um, you can see I can get a really bright, almost white. And I'm just picking out some light spots. And so you, you kind of see forms start to emerge. Um, and, and already you've got shades of light and dark and grays. And so, you know, you make it easy. You don't really need a, a number five brush. You know, you just uh, wipe it out with a towel. You can use a brush to wipe out. Um, I find this uh, a cloth or a rag works better for, for blending. And then I can always go back in. I've taken out too much. Always go back in and darken it. So it, it can go really fast. And this is what's so beautiful about oils, because watercolor you've got that down and you're pretty much stuck with with what's what you've put down you have to think way ahead of time and and figure out where you're going um, oils you can push around and change and and i like working sort of wet wet and wet paint because it's just so easy so forgiving So this is kind of like drawing, drawing with my finger. You normally let this color dry before you put it together? You, I'm not going to do that today, but for, for our, when I teach for our class, like, like uh, the lemons that Cheryl did or, or this painting, um, we did let it dry. Um, It'll be a little trickier working with the wet, but I'll incorporate what's down here to get my my lights and darks. So when I when I look at these, I'm I'm doing constant comparisons. Um, you know, this this is darker than this over here, and um, these leaves are almost the same value as the background. They do, they almost disappear parts of them. So it's just constant um, analyzing, comparing lights and darks. Um, I like to use the background to help define my still life. It's a positive and negative space. So by painting, going back into the background, I can really define what's happening with those lemons.
and sometimes it's a very light touch. You don't need a lot of, a lot of pressure on these. And I like the, the transmitted light that comes through the slice. It's a little, little drama, but I, the tendency is to, to over dramatize some of those things. And it's, it's often more effective uh, to keep them, uh, be true to what's there and keep them a little understated. I like, I like paintings that draw you in and so many paintings are, are kind of in your face and uh, shout at you. And I like, I like paintings that you kind of have to come in and get a closer look at and, and I just, it's just a personal thing. And, and there's, again, there's no right or wrong, but limited to the way, way I'm painting. So I'm just pushing around. You do a video with a towel? <laughs> I could. I could. No, I I will use a brush later and and actually I could, you know, if I want some I put some paint thinner, a little more control with, with the the brush. But I I wanna make sure I have that form down first and for some reason for me the the towel gives gives you know the these middle tones um, I, I think they're if I had a brush um, it would take me a long time to to cover that ground and, and get that you know you want to see all these shades of gray and, and middle values the brush um, is nice for for more detail, but I'm really not too interested in detail right now. And yeah, I'll use a brush. For some of these, um, I see smaller areas, a little too, too small to wipe out with, with the towel. And when I look at, again, it's comparing. When, when I look at this, um, this side of the bowl is actually darker than this background. And of course, this side, of course, the background's super dark. And so I'm just gonna lighten this. And it's just this constant um, pushing and pulling and comparing um, this uh, actually, from where I'm sitting, and it's probably quite different from where you are, but this edge of the lemon is, is darker than the background. The background sort of has this warm glow behind the, the setup, which I like. You like a page standing up or do you ever sit down? I, I do sit down, but... Um, it's good to stay away, stand away from your work. I try and get people to get up and you know stand six feet away because and, and even you know I I can really compare that to to what I have standing up and and stepping away because you you sit and you work and you know your face is 12 inches from your painting and you tend to get too wound up in detail. You miss the big, the bigger picture, kind of. So I think standing is recommended. It's got, this is lifting a lot of paint here. So in a sense, you're painting pretty thick. Pretty thick? Um, not much. Well, they, these I did thin down. I probably thinned them more than I needed to because 
uh, coating this canvas, it, it's lifting real, real easy. Uh, long handled brushes are nice because they do encourage, you know, to have that distance between your work. But um, I like I like the rounded tips, the filberts, because you tend not to leave little edges everywhere. Um, but the the main thing is a, a really soft brush, and this might not be the ideal brush, but it's fairly soft, and I can blend. So I can go on like this for a while just just with these neutrals. And then of course when you get into the color that's that's the fun part. But I'm just kind of uh, correcting things Getting my background down. Let's see, I've moved one of these leaves completely. Change that. I find if I'm not pretty accurate to, to what's there, I, you, you can really go astray. And it's still not the same color as you started with. Yeah, I just, it's a warm uh, burn umber uh, mixed with a little black. Uh, so, some artists um, won't use black at all, but I, I do. So you start all your paintings with that? Um, this type of still life, yes. And when I look at this, um, I, you know, the, this edge of the bowl is, is super dark and it really disappears into here. So now if I, you know, people think, well, I've got to get that line of the bowl just right. Well, it, it vanishes, it, it disappears. So I paint it that way. And that, that gives you your, you know, real sense of depth. I usually try and get it down in a few hours and and I think things just come out better if you if you work quickly now when it starts to dry of course we've, we've left it and it starts to dry can you get back to it in other words well you I won't be able to wipe, use a wipe out technique wipe out. no but um, I when I go back in with color um, I can certainly so what uh, you're so doing right, right now, you have to finish if you're going to go to color. Kind, kinda, yeah. And then even with color, you can you can wipe out with the color, and that gives you an, a kind of an interesting glow on on things. But even with this technique, to do this stage is fairly quick. I mean, yeah. Can, we we did this stage in an hour. Yeah. So it's not like you're getting real tired and you have to go to bed. You, know? <laughs> you can finish that stage in your life. And, and our, our still life was a little simpler, I think. Yeah. That I complicated yeah. this a bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I like people to use a, as big a brush as they possibly can. And they almost feel handicapped by it. but. Um, it, it gives you a better result. If you use this teeny tiny brush, you're, you're too wrapped up in details and I don't want people to be detailed at this point at all. So very, very roughed in. And I'm just trying to soften this whole thing. So it's pretty dark. I'm gonna I'm picking out little points of light.
This is a great technique, I think, for flowers. Um, you know, flower petals are so soft and ethereal, kind of. So it, I'm picking out lightest lights, the darkest darks. I find it's helpful to, to squint, to blur things a bit. Getting lighter and lighter as I go, I think. This is my drawing, my composition. Maybe I'll get into a little color. And I, I like to keep things so simple and sort of portable. I use palette paper for now. I, I always caution people, especially beginning painters, you know, you get these beginner sets and they give you five colors and one is uh, phthalo blue and phthalo green and they're relatively recent colors, uh, recent pigments. I think they were de developed in the 30s and 40s. Um, so on old paintings, you don't, you don't see those colors. And they're, they're gorgeous colors, beautiful teal, blues, and greens, but they often don't exist in nature. So if that's your go-to color for, say, a, a tree, if you're looking for green, it's, it's totally the wrong, wrong green. Um, they also call it viridian and cerulean. I really caution against those. They have high staining powers and they can kind of quickly overtake a whole painting with, with that tone. So for blues, I, I have an ultramarine. Uh, I like uh, sap green um, and olive green. And with, for a painting like this, um, I usually put my white in the center. I mix into that. Um, I find with, with paintings, uh, if you get into the white too soon, it gets very chalky looking. And so you have to be careful with, with that. I use whites mostly just as uh, small highlights. So I kind of have a full range of colors here. And when I put my color on, um, working wet like this, I'm incorporating this, my darkness that I have down already and it kind of instantly blends. I think it's easier if, if this were dry, but I can pick up underneath.
and a real, a real soft brush. I think that's the key. And it's kind of just a constant analysis of what, what I'm looking at. And I don't have any paint thinner on my brush at this point. Just it's just pure paint. I'm always wiping my brush off with the excess. Oops. So some of these, you know, the you analyze these shades. I mean, I see red through here. It's probably reflected from the carpet. This looks very green to me in the middle. Um, and there's just a, a, a lot going on when you really study it. A little uh, gets very warm in through here. And that's, those are all the things that'll make it read true. Wiping out through color can be very effective. So, you know, you, you goof up, you can just wipe it out. Connie, how long does it take you when you're at home to do a painting like this? Um, a couple hours, yeah. Okay. Well, ab about like, like it does here. I mean, it's, it's, I've done workshops where you, you have to get a painting down in three hours, and it really forces you to, to focus and concentrate. And this, so this works for, nicely for vent blending. So I'll, I'll use a couple brushes. I usually use one for, for real light paint and another for darker shades. forget I I um yeah I I tell I have an assistant to do nothing but clean my brushes <laughs> that that would work out exactly <laughs> and Vermeer is, was one of my in in art school you know we had some teachers you know they, they say well you know just go to it and express yourself but um, others we we copied. We copied the masters, and I copied Vermeer. So I like this this transmitted light that's coming through the one section there. Just get a suggestion of that at this point.
I always caution people, you know, you almost never see pure color. People will go in with a, a pure yellow or pure red. Um, they're almost never straight from the tube colors on anything. Um, I often do three, four-way mixes uh, just to get get that right effect. And I think people that that um, you know, it's nice to be able to paint with color, but the color makes more of a statement sometimes when it's just used in moderation. If you don't use black, you can get pretty close by mixing a burn umber and a, and a blue even. You know, a lot of your masters, Pardon? In a lot of masters fix colors in their core and they're on scaffolding, for example, like paint and stage and so forth. So it's an amazing colors up here. And uh, it was amazing how many of them how many of them died. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just getting down color notes. Um, light, like around the room. Well, I I picked this room because it's a little darker. Um, in the front of the building, it was just too washed out and bright all around, and I I really like to control the light, which is why I, you know, do the the a box around it, and. It just helps me to see see what's going on there and if there's too much light all around it tends to look flat you know and this this you can really get more of the effect of, of depth on it So this carpet detail would be challenging, but I, I, I like the, gives it some liveliness. Yeah, yeah, I like to do landscapes. Painting outside is, um, a little different. I do. I use a rag for for blending on a lot of it. I tend to work, you know, background to foreground. Um, but yeah, I, I love to paint outside. I'd like to do some classes out, outdoors. That's picking up too much. So the challenge is getting these in the carpet, the, the, the colors um, really change in the shadow. Oh, good for her. I mean, that's wonderful. Thank you for telling me that. Those things make my day. You mean you're not her favorite artist? No, I don't. What's wrong with her? I don't. <laughs> 
<laughs> I do a lot of things. She loves humor. Mm -hmm. So this will take some doing, I think. And I hate to get, you know, like with the carpet, you see lines, but um, kind of like painting a tree in a landscape. It's rather than going on in a line, you, you go perpendicular. And it's, it's such a, you know, in the Dutch still lifes, you see a lot of beautiful carpets and the, the way some are painted just puts me to shame. They're, I've always marveled at how they're able to capture that. Because fabric, any sort of fabric or material can be difficult. Um, I do sometimes drape the background. hard to get some of the intensity of color painting like this I find and if I were to let this dry um, I could uh, like uh, the red is so intense that I'm looking at and I just can't get it with this paint but if I were to let this dry and go go over it with the red glaze it would really really glow and, and it would be closer to to what I want to do here. But yeah, parts of this are, are almost abstract. These odd shapes and angles in the carpet. Even gets reflected into this. I know you've been using that same brush from the very start. I think I have. You, yeah. Do you I, really do that? Um, I I do. I I switch. You know, usually really light paint for one brush and and dark. But um, I kind of like it when when they all mix together. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'm going to switch brushes and, and work on the woman's a little bit. Something really soft. This brush is just super soft and great for blending. <coughs> but I do tend to jump around, which may be confusing, but it, I think it helps to orchestrate the whole painting rather than work on, you know, this one down here for a long time, kind of go around and... You're painting, you've been painting thick now, I mean, you've got these in the tubes. Do you ever want to thin things? Um, well, for glazes, like, uh, but they're really only effective on top of dry paint. Right. But yeah, you can do real thin glazes and get nice, nice effects. You, they're good for intensifying color because some of this has gotten a little chalky already. And, and so I probably want to go back into it. And what 
What's your favorite part of art? Do you like I notice you know, most of your work is indoors. Um I I get on certain kicks. Um my my latest are interiors, so I've I've done that and other interiors. Okay. And um yeah, I, I you do still life a lot for teaching, and, and it's it's a great way to to start painting and, and just to get people to start painting, make it make it easy. They don't have to you don't have to have tons of su supplies or spend a lot of money. Set up your interiors the way you set up your still life. I mean, is that kind of? That's my house. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> yes. And um, now uh, the light really was it's backlit from from the window behind it. Um, and and that too. Um, there, that's my house. But and again, to, you know, back to the Dutch painters. They did a lot of interiors and church interiors and, and uh, domestic life, you know, within beautifully lit rooms. And just this is such a nice soft brush. Um, so I'm just blending kind of what's there. You teach a lot? It's, uh, I have classes running um, next week and the week after. And yeah, it's, it's increasing. I, it, it takes a while to get students and people on the same page. And um, so teaching's always been a backup for me. Kind of, I notice as I'm working, this this paint has dried a little bit, so it's it's not lifting as much. But I'm able to really blend blend some of these areas that I started out with, and I'm using again, I'm using a lot of the background to help define and what's in front of it. And like this leaf, it kind of, uh, there's no, when I look at it, there's no hard edge there. Um, some places you do see an edge. And where I do see that, I'll go in with my palette knife, if I can find it. has a little I had it maybe be a little overstated there. But towards the end um, for some of these really intense like like this I would do with a palette knife some of this and certainly the the white highlights are effective with a palette knife I see this background it just has this nice warm glow to it on the left side mostly so And that gives you a feeling of air in a, in a painting. I think when you have 
all these values, it, it's, you have a sense of atmosphere, space and air, all that good stuff. Have you ever get to the point where you have a hard time knowing where to quit? Yes. <laughs> That's the hardest thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can, you can just uh, work it to death if you're not careful. And I've been guilty of that a lot. And part, part of my learning is, is knowing when to, to just stop because you can, you can get wound up in endless detail and, and then you do lose sight of the the big picture. I'm playing around with the di different techniques, but with the palette knife you can often scrape out paint too, as well as, as laying it on. Um, sometimes you can get some nice effects doing that. like, you know, I'm almost handicapped by using this big brush, but I kind of like the way this works, because a smaller brush it would just take too long. So back to wiping out with a towel. It's looking a little like a Cezanne, I think. <laughs> but that's okay. So I'm really getting just some thick paint here. With the palette knife. Some of it's so intense. These lights. I'm just playing around here now. But you can really get get the intense color this way. So rather than do glazes, um, yeah, that gives you a real intensity. getting there <laughs> and at this point uh, with, with the thick paint um, I can't really blend it I can soften some of this background but it's lifting quite a bit Ellipses are, are tricky, and one, one thing I usually carry with me is a mirror. 
um, especially things like like bowls and and um, shapes like the lemons. And often, when you look through a mirror and look at it, you can see where it, you know you, it's off a little bit. Or you could get a ruler and and carefully measure it or compass, but. Mirrors are, are helpful. So lots of different techniques. You can scrape out, you can add on. Um, So I can work on this and work on it, soften it, get detail, it's constant back and forth. But it's a it's a start, it's almost there, I think. <laughs> so And as you say, you can get endless detail um, if you want, but I think it's kind of nice a little, uh, this is certainly a little rougher than, than some. That. Oh, <laughs> did it? Did I fill up the time? 
Time is, time is not relevant. <laughs> no. It never is when you're a painter. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. thank you so much for coming.